Hey, I'm Justin. And I'm Scott. And guess what? We live in Fowler Love. All right, lovers of life, we are here to wrap up the Cosmos series. If you haven't had a chance to watch the rest of the videos in that, you can go ahead and check the description below to find We Live In For Comfort, where we talk about the room, We Live In For Food, where we talk about two of the restaurants, and We Live In For Nightlife, where we go over some bars and drinks. And we're talking today about the Cosmo, the overall experience. And we bought a mug. Yes. That's why that's here. Yes. You get it? Bought a mug. Bought a mug. <laughs> that didn't come from there. That came from Starbucks. No, but you know what? There's a Starbucks with the Cosmo. There is, which is kind of nice. cool things is that they have sort of this area that lines up perfectly and like just the thought that went into arranging that it sort of shows the level of detail that's consistent throughout yes. probably one of the strongest things about the Cosmo is the visual aesthetic yes uh, to go off of that great um, segue the art yeah the art this strong point for the Cosmo is the art mm-hmm yes They really bring it, um, like there's just random statues up on the third floor in the convention area where not a lot of people are going to see it to begin with, but they still put in that level of detail. Mm -hmm. Art on every level. Yeah, in every yeah. nook and cranny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one thing that we did love. The carpet? Oh my god. There's going to be a video specifically dedicated to carpet someday, hint, hint. But for now, damn Cosmo got some cool carpet. Yes. Like it's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, and we we stress over the carpet. Actually, we, we try to keep our eyes above the floor level because some of those carpets are hideous in some yeah. of those uh, locations. But this one is on point. Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk about the sex vibe? So Cosmo, from the art to the people who are there, has this like consistent like flirtatious thing going. Um, just like, again, their carpets have sort of suggestive patterns. They go with lots of like, you know, keyholes and keys and just mm -hmm. lots of lots of little suggestive details. Uh huh. Um, Fishnet stockings. Um, yes, it's uh, it's just uh, the high heels, high heels everywhere. Um, el the ele sleek elegance, but not classy elegant, more sexy elegant. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a little bit about the electronic concierge. So they have like a lot of, a lot of places now have a text concierge, like Caesars properties have, I think Ivy. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of places have that now, it's pretty common, mm -hmm. but I don't think anybody's done as much to sort of characterize their electronic concierge character as much as they have. So I just wanted to give some samples of the random like sexuality that she brings to it. So if you text her and uh, you ask about services that she can offer, tell me what you're in the mood for. Um, whether you want room service, takeout, light bites, sit down, buffet, food hall, or late night. Said t I put takeout. She says, "Some things just taste better behind closed doors." Here's one last hookup. A link to check out so you can skip the front desk on the way out. It's been a pleasure to have you push my buttons. Ciao for now. Or the best tales always start with a great cocktail. <laughs> yes, they do. It's basically like Madonna wrote the lines for this, for their <laughs> little Rose character, um, which is kind of cool. It brings something special and extra, something yeah. unique to it. Yeah, it really does. And, it, and like we said, it just, it just adds to the whole sexual vibe of the place. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what we, I mean, I loved 
I loved it. Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. So, customer service. Yeah, so customer service is sort of, I don't know, one of their big, I guess, up and down experiences. Either you're going to have the best customer service of your life and they're going to bend over backwards for you and they're amazing, or it's the worst customer service and they're, they're through and they don't want to deal with you and how dare you even call them. Mm -hmm. And it's been kind of like that up or down all, just yeah. all the time. And I'd say it's like 70% great experiences, but there's a solid 30% that are just unpleasant. Yeah, it's um, black and white. Yeah, it's way up and down, and way all over the place. not consistent at all. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't take away the fact that um, we have received the best experience there that we have on the whole trip. Yeah. Some yeah. in those, in that 70% moment. We really do bring yeah. it on that. <laughs> so let's go over the amenities. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty standard amenities. Um, it's, you know, got the, for Vegas, this is pretty standard. It's got a good size spa. Mm -hmm. um, it has a couple of pools, and a couple of them are like, uh, you know, adult only or party pools or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then it has um, a, a, a convent. Convention center. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, we actually make notes and um, I put a convent, you know. Short for convention. So it's got a, uh, a standard convention center, but pretty big, pretty pretty artsy and stylish still though. Even even those areas that just don't seem that common. Uh-huh. Um, and then it does have a buffet. And right now that's kind of a big deal because Wicked Spoon is maybe the only one on the strip that's even open. Yes, currently it is due to COVID. Yep. But they were kind of always built in a way where they could actually survive um, and handle it a little bit differently. They always came with a pre-portioned food. They always came with little stylish dishes or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of helped them transition to needing people to hand it out rather than you grabbing your own. Mm -hmm. uh, the one... Uh, Wynn hasn't been able to pull that off. Yeah. And neither has Bacchanal or whatever. Yeah, the one setback is uh, the roped off areas where you, you're you not able to really view the food that you're picking and, um, and also portion control. Some people like to load up and... Yeah, yeah, loading up is kind of a chore at, at this time. But hey, there might be a video coming to talk about that. So um, we specifically talked about two of the places to eat, but that's not all that they have. It's not just China Poblano and Egg Slut. They have a huge number of options. Yes. On the Boulevard Tower, the second and third floor is all restaurant. Uh -huh. And it's really, really cool. They've got so many options. Block 16 is such a great place to just grab easy bites and they're still really really good food mm -hmm. it is a, a a bougie i call it a bougie food court uh, because that's what it is yeah but um you know not your typical uh panda express or you know mm -hmm. sandwich place it's it's very artisanal and the other thing that's really cool is that they have kind of like secret places to eat i mean everybody who's probably watching these kind of reviews knows about secret pizza, but they also have something called the Blue Donkey, which is like hidden behind the food court, hidden behind block 16. Uh -huh. It's too small right now, so they don't let anybody in there um, due to COVID. They can't have like the capacity to make it work. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really cool that they thought about these small hidden features too, that are gonna come back after COVID. So yeah, you can't really like talk about Cosmo without talking about where it lies on the strip because it is a fantastic location. Yes, It's right across the street from the Miracle Mile. It's right next door to, um, oh wow. Bellagio? The Bellagio. The Bellagio. Which is where they get the fantastic views that we talked about in our other video. Uh-huh. Because it's right there, right next to uh, the Bellagio Fountains. Yep. And um, if you're staying on the in the Boulevard Tower, which it's right up against the strip. I mean, mm -hmm. you come downstairs and... Walk out the front door, basically. Yeah, and you're yeah. right there on the strip. No mile walk to get to the actual strip. So, but probably Chelsea, even though it's set further back, has the better views mm -hmm. um, because you're not towering right immediately over it with it like 30 feet away, and then you know 
200, 300 feet down. Yeah, exactly. So um, check out that We Live In For Comfort to see those views. So what did you think of it overall? So overall, Cosmopolitan is my, not my favorite ho not my favorite resort on the Strip, but one of them, definitely. And I'm not gonna say that about all, so don't think that. <laughs> but the Cosmo, it's, it's, it's up there. It is up there. Yeah, it's definitely one that's really, really awesome. You, you've got to be prepared to spend, and I mean spend. Yes. Um, but that's kind of true for most of Vegas. There's not a whole lot of super cheap options, especially if you're looking for, you know, five-star amenities and super comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, you know, staying at Bally's or <laughs> Flamingo or, you know, one of the yeah. sort of... Um, lower end you're going there because of the location only mm -hmm. you're coming to this one for not only the location but for the treatment and for the luxury yes. for the overall experience uh -huh. it's not just like a party location like it's not just a bed in a place yes and this was our second time staying there and hey we'll be back yeah and that goes to show you that uh it's worth it it's worth it if you are enjoying this video go ahead and hit that thumbs up Give us a subscribe and hit that notification bell. Ding dong! So you are always in the loop for new videos. You can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram so you can get little sneak peeks at We Live It For Love. I have one question for you. Are you living for love? You don't need to keep asking if I'm living for love. I am. What the fuck was that? Art.